Welcome back to Bentley House Kits. If you're watching this video, most likely you have purchased this chair kit or are thinking about purchasing the chair kit from Bentley House Minis. The video will start by explaining how to put together the 112th scale chair, and then it will go on to explain the differences in the 124th, but the directions for the 112th still apply. So please make sure to watch the entire video. In your 112th scale kit, you're going to receive two mat board pieces, one cardstock piece, one cleaning cotton round, and two toothpicks. One of the mat board sheets has enough shapes in it to create one chair. So start by grabbing one sheet and removing all of the pieces from the sheet. You will get the best results and the best cuts by making sure you have a brand new blade in your craft knife as you cut through the tabs that are holding the shapes in place. As you remove each piece, you will want to clean it with the cotton round. You will have two chair backs, two front legs, two seats, and two side rails. Even though the kits are initially cleaned before packaging, this process helps remove any extra ash that's revealed once the shapes are cut out of the sheet. To start putting this kit together, we are going to glue some pieces on top of each other. You're going to glue the two chair backs together, the two front legs, and the two seats. Do not glue the side rails together as those need to remain separate. I'm using tacky glue for this process and making sure I have something heavy on hand to put it underneath while it dries. I'm making sure to cover the entire surface with glue so I know that there is a good bond between the two pieces. I'm also making sure to line up the edges as well as I can so that it looks like it's one piece once it's glued. I'm adding a 1-2-3 block on top, but a heavy book will work just as well. I did the same process for the front legs and the seat. Now I should have five pieces. You will notice that a couple of the pieces have holes on the interior. Those need to face each other because later down the road they will be the resting places for the toothpick pegs. Make sure that as you assemble your chair, those are facing in. To start adding the side rails, I'm adding some tacky glue in the gap that's on the side of the back of the chair. I'm going to add the little tab into the side and allow that to dry. I'm going to do the exact same thing for the other side of the chair. Make sure that the flat part of the side rail is on the top and the arched is on the bottom. Now I can add in my front legs. Again, I'm going to make sure that the holes are facing towards each other or inside the chair. I'm adding glue on either side on the top corner, and this is going to be where the side rails rest. You may have to slightly pull apart the side rails to get them to fit this front leg piece. The reason for that is it's slightly wider than the back piece, and this just helps create an interesting shape with our chair. While that's drying, I'm going to make sure and set it on my work surface and make sure that all four legs are sitting even and that everything looks good so it dries in the correct shape. This is creating the frame in which we can now glue our seat. The thin part of the seat is going to fit in between the two columns in the chair back and you want to make sure from the bottom that it is even on the underside as the seat dries. I'm using tacky glue all around the top of the frame, adding in my seat. Then I can flip it over and make sure that there is an even edge on both sides of the seat, and this is just to make sure that the seat goes on straight and my frame underneath is not crooked as it dries. This is how it should look. Once that's done, you have an option. This is an optional process. If you want to have your front legs just slightly bend out a little bit, grab at the top of the leg and bend the mat board forward. If you want to do this, just make sure you are being very gentle and moving the pieces very slowly, a bit at a time. If you go too quickly or are too rough, you could bend your chair leg or break it. By doing this, you will end up with a little crease at the top of the chair, but I think it gives it a little bit more of a realistic look. Typically, chair legs go out just a little bit. I'm doing the same thing with the back of the chair by grabbing at the very base near the top of the seat and slightly bending it back as well. You don't want to bend it so much that it breaks the integrity of your mat board, but just a little bit. Now I'm grabbing my toothpicks to create the supports for the bottom part of the side legs. 
I'm going to hold it up to my chair and I'm going to cut the toothpick so I know that it is long enough to fit inside the laser cut holes on the interior of the legs. This means I am cutting it a little bit longer than the space between the legs because it needs to fit inside those holes. Here you can see it fitting in. I highly suggest doing a dry fit before actually gluing it in. Also make sure to cut the second support the exact same length so that you know that your chair is going to look as symmetrical as possible. I added tacky glue to either end and then slowly and carefully slid it into place so that the ends of the toothpick fit inside the laser cut holes. This next part is optional and for it you only need half of this cardstock sheet. The other half is going to be needed for your other chair. Again, you will want to use a sharp craft knife to cut these out. There are two pieces for the seat and there is one piece to cover up the front area of the chair and one piece to cover up the back. You will be able to tell which one is which because it will match the pattern of the chair. This is just in case you want to cover up the joints that you will see once you put your chair together. This is optional and not needed for your chair to look correct. There's also a piece that goes on the back and again it will just cover up those tabs if they are bothering you. The seat pieces can be used in a couple different ways. The first way is if you just want a little extra detail or a little edge going around the side of your seat, you can glue one of these pieces in place and it will just look like your seat is a little bit more carved on top. If you want to do some upholstery, you can glue these two pieces together to create a more firm piece that you can then upholster around. I'm going to show you how I do a little bit of the upholstery. I'm adding some tacky glue on one of the pieces and then gluing the other one on top. This, like I said, is going to make this piece a little bit more firm and easier to use as I upholster. Before upholstering, it's a good idea to go ahead and finish your chair and add some paint. I am going to be sanding down the sides. This is just a personal choice. If you like having the crisp, sharp edges, you do not have to sand, but if you would prefer to have it look a little bit more worn, sanding is a good option. Just make sure you're gentle and go slow so that your mat board doesn't start coming apart. Then I'm going to use some acrylic paint to paint the entire piece. I highly suggest not watering down your paint, at least for the first coat, because otherwise it can cause the mat board to warp. This is my acrylic based piece, and I'm also going to be using some chalk pastel. Again, this is all optional. These are just ways that I decided to finish the chair, and these are really fun because you can do a lot of different things with it. Remember if you try to use some chalk pastel to do a coat afterwards so that the chalk pastel isn't coming off on your hands. Here I'm showing the slight difference between using the cardstock cover on the front and not using it. There's not a huge difference, it's just a personal preference. Same thing but showing you on the back. Now I'm going to show you how I upholstered the seat piece. These two pieces that I've glued together are now dry and I'm going to be using this velvety type material. This was just something I chose. You can also use some stuffing and kind of make it a little bit more of a softer seat, but you know, you can really kind of play around with whatever you like. I'm going to be gluing this on the underside or the wrong side of the fabric and then cutting close to the edge so I don't have that much material that I have to mess with while I upholster. To make folding over the fabric a little bit easier, I'm using some scissors and clipping into the corner areas that go around the rounded parts of the seat. I'm first folding over the sides and then I will fold over the front and back. Once those are dry and I'm happy with those, then I can add a little bit of glue onto those corners that will be sticking up and then I can fold those corners over on top and that's just a really simple way to upholster the seat of the chair. Once that's dry, I can cut off any remaining bits and then add some glue and glue it onto the top of my chair seat, making sure that it is as centered as possible. Here's the finished 12 scale chair. Please don't mind the spider webs. This ended up going into one of my projects and I forgot to take a final video of it before I added all the spooky details. 
Now I'm going to be talking about the 124th scale chair differences and how you can best use this kit, although the chairs themselves go together almost the exact same way. In your kit, you are going to be receiving one cotton round, two paper clips that are going to be clipped on your pages, so just remove those first, and then you will have two double thick cardstock sheets that have enough pieces to make four half scale chairs. One of the main differences here is how I'm going to suggest that you glue these pieces together. First, start cutting out the chair back and the front legs that do not have the holes. Because these chairs are so small, the holes end up making the legs very, very delicate. So I suggest taking the pieces that don't have the holes in them and gluing them on top of the pieces that do have the holes so that they are more secure before you remove them from the sheet. While doing this, you have to be really careful not to get any of the glue in the laser cut parts of the sheet because it will make it more difficult to get out. So just make sure you're only putting glue on top of those pieces with the holes and then glue the other pieces on top. I always go back and make sure I bend the paper just a little bit to make sure those edges where the laser cutter cut them out are still free of glue. Then you can cut through the tabs and pop those pieces out, knowing that they're going to be a little bit more stable. I also glued one of the seats on top of the other seat, but that's not as critical because those pieces are pretty stable. You can glue them outside of the paper. Now that those pieces are together, I can assemble the chair in the same exact way that I did for the 112 scale. I'm going to kind of power through this during this part because it is also a little bit easier to see in 112 scale because the pieces are a little bit bigger. So if you just purchased the 124th and you fast forwarded through the instructions of the 112th, you might want to go back and just check that out if anything seems confusing here. The next big difference is going to be the use of a paper clip for the lower supports as opposed to toothpicks. The reason I'm using a paper clip or this wire is because it is going to be a little bit stronger and help this very tiny delicate chair have a little bit more strength. You're going to want some wire cutters to cut off a length that is a little wider than the distance between the two legs and then just put it in place with a little bit of glue, making sure the glue ends up in the holes. I'm also going to go back and before I paint, just add a tiny bit of glue on either side of the bottom of the legs. They are one of the thinnest parts of the chair and so before adding the paint where paper can warp, I decided to add some glue and in the end, after that had dried and I painted, I didn't have any of the paper coming apart and so I really do think that that was a good idea and I wanted to add that suggestion in. Now I'm going to finish off the chair with a coat of acrylic paint. Again, do not water down your paint, at least for the first layer of paint, and add it straight from whatever acrylic paint bottle or tube you have. And this is my finished chair. It ends up super tiny, but super cute, a lot of detail. And here it is compared with a 124 scale figure, which is about five and a half feet tall in real life. If you're interested in learning more or purchasing this kit, you can go to the link in the description box below or just type in bentleyhouseminis.com and it will take you to my website. Thank you. Bye.